Hello, and welcome back to the series on Catholic women. My name is Jenny Zayner, and today we'll be talking about St. Hildegard of Bingen. St. Hildegard, also known as St. Hildegard of Bingen and Sybil of the Rhine, is a doctor of the church. She was also a writer, a composer, a philosopher, a Christian mystic, and a German Benedictine abbess. She was born around 1098 to a noble family as the youngest of 10 children. Her parents had promised their sick daughter to God, so they placed her in the care of a Benedictine nun in the Diocese of Speyer at, when she was eight years old. She was taught how to read and to sing Latin psalms. Her holiness and strong piety made her adored by all who met her. It is said from this young age, Hildegard began experiencing intense visions. When Hildegard turned 18, she became a Benedictine nun at the monastery. After the sister who took her in died in, 13, in 1136, Hildegard was elected the prior, prioress of the abbey. Her unique nature and strong devotion to the Holy, Holy Spirit attracted many novices to the convent. The rapid growth alarmed Hildegard. She soon moved on with 18 other sisters to found a new Benedictine abbey near Bingen in 1148 and later established a convent. She believed that it was divine command that she do these things. Hildegard quickly became recognized for her immense knowledge of all things faithful, music, and natural science, with knowledge of herbs and medicinal arts. Despite never having had any formal education and not even knowing how to write, much of her insight is believed to have to have been communicated to her by God Himself through her frequent visions and communication with Him. At first, Hildegard did not want her visions to be made public, but she would confide secretly to a spiritual director. He passed on the knowledge to his abbot, who decided to assign a monk to document everything that Hildegard saw. Her accounts were later submitted to the bishop, who acknowledged them as being truly from God. Her visions were then brought to the pope with a favorable conclusion. Hildegard's fame began to spread all throughout Europe. People traveled near and far to hear her speak and to seek help from her. Even those who were not common people paid Hildegard a visit. For the remainder of her life, Hildegard continued writing. Her principal work is called Scivius. 26 of her visions and their meanings are recorded. Hildegard wrote on many other subjects, too. Her works included commentary on the Gospels, the Athanasian Creed, and the rule of St. Benedict, as well as the lives of the saints, and a medical work on the well-being of the body. Hildegard also became an important person in the history of music. There are more chant compositions surviving by St. Hildegard than by any other medieval composer. The last year of St. Hildegard's life was difficult for her and for her convent. Going against the wishes of a diocesan authority, Hildegard refused to remove the body of a young man buried in the cemetery attached to her convent. The body had been previously excommunicated, but since he received his last sacraments before dying, Hildegard felt he had been reconciled to the church. Her actions forced her convent to be placed under an interdict by the bishop and chapter of Mainz. Months would pass before the interdict was lifted and Hildegard died on September 17, 1179, before the interdict was lifted. She was buried in the church. When the convent was destroyed in 1632, her relics were moved to Cologne. After her death, she became even more venerated than she was in her life. According to her biographer, she was always a saint, and through her intercession, many miracles have occurred. St. Hildegard became one of the first people 
the Roman canonization process was officially applied to. It took quite some time in the beginning stages, so she remained beatified for years. On May 10, 2012, Pope Benedict XVI gave Hildegard an equivalent canonization and laid down the groundwork for naming her a doctor of the church. Five months later, she officially became a doctor of the church, making her the fourth woman and one of the 35 saints to be given the title in the Roman Catholic Church. Pope Benedict XVI called St. Hildegard perennial, perennially relevant and an authentic teacher of theology and a profound scholar of both natural sciences and of music. Thank you for joining us.